بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو ارگینک کیمسٹری کلاس ٹوڈے دی ٹاپک ایس کیمیکل بارننگ ان ارگینک مالیکیولز ان پریویس لیکچر دی فالوینگ ٹاپکس ورہ ڈسکس We started from the definition, history, sources, and applications of organic compounds in organic chemistry. Then we explained the characteristic properties of organic molecules. Then how organic molecules are, are purified and how organic molecules are characterized. What are different techniques for the purification and characterization of organic compounds the next topic was how organic molecules are presented what are different ways to present organic molecules and last topic was classification of organic compounds how organic molecules are classified and introduction to functional groups what are different functional groups how they are presented today lecture is to cover the following three topics first of all chemical bonding in organic compounds we shall start from the definition of chemical bond what what is mean by chemical bond how chemical bond is formed why chemical bond is formed and what kinds of bond are present in organic molecules then types of chemical bonding mainly we will focus on sigma and pi bond and polar and nonpolar bond and the last topic is characteristics of chemical bonding there is bond length bond energy bond angle etc let me start from the chemical bonding that what is chemical bond by the definition chemical bonds are forces that hold atoms together to make compounds or molecules attractive forces that hold atoms together to make compounds or molecules in 1916 Albert Kosel and Gilbert Lewis were the first to explain the formation of chemical bonds They explain chemical bonding on the basis of the inertness of noble gases. There are two types of forces that hold atoms and molecules together. The first one is intramolecular forces and the second one is intermolecular forces. Intramolecular forces are those forces of attraction that hold the atoms together in a molecule. We can simply say within a molecule. For example, ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds. These are the examples of intramolecular forces. The next type is intermolecular forces. Those forces of attraction that hold molecules together. Now you look at the difference. Intramolecular forces hold the atoms in a molecule while intermolecular forces between molecules so that hold molecules together so in intramolecular forces we are discussing the individual bonds within a molecule in intermolecular forces we are discussing about the bonds which are present among molecules are between two molecules how different molecules are joined together how different molecules are joined together the example of intermolecular forces are London dispersion forces dipole dipole forces in hydrogen bonding other example which are which we can say makes example are ion dipole forces and induced intermolecular forces you can compare the two forces by looking at the molecule of HCl 
Now look at HCl molecule. The bond exists between carb chlorine and hydrogen. Chlorine atom, hydrogen atom. The bond between these two atoms is an example of intramolecular force. Now comparison of intramolecular forces and intermolecular forces, you can see HCl molecule. The bond between chlorine and hydrogen is an example of intramolecular forces. Chlorine and hydrogen is joined together by a chemical bond and it is a type of intramolecular force. Now look at the this molecule, look at this molecule CLNH. The bond between hydrogen and chlorine is also is an example of intramolecular force. Now, if we look to this HCl molecule and this HCl molecule and look at this dotted, dotted line. Now, the force of attraction between one molecule, one HCl molecule and another HCl molecule, this kind of attractive forces is called intermolecular force. Intramolecular force, which is between the atoms, these forces are stronger. While intermolecular forces, which is between the molecules, these are comparatively weak. Now the next question is, why do chemical bonds are formed? The answer of this question is, chemical bonds form to allow atoms to lower their energy and become more stable. In 1916, Lewis suggested that Atoms become stable when they have a full valence shell of electrons, that is, they, when they acquire noble gas electronic configuration, which is known as octet rule. So, chemical bonds are formed in order to attain stability. In order to attain stability, the, the atoms tend to form chemical bonds. There are two approaches of chemical bonding. One is classical concept and the other is modern concept. In classical concept, it is assumed that electrons revolve around the nucleus and fix circular path. Bohr model is an example of classical concept and you know about the Bohr model. The modern concept which is called orbital concept where Instead of orbit, the orbital terminology is used. An orbital is an uncertain area inside an atom within which the probability to find an electron is highest. The definition of orbital is the region where the probability of finding electron is maximum. So orbital can be presented as boxes with electrons in them with electron and them shown as arrows. If we look at the presentation of different types of orbitals, we have S, P, D and F orbitals, S orbital, a spherical, P orbital, dumbbell shape, D orbital, double dumbbell shape and F orbital is, is complex shape. On the basis of Electronic configuration in the periodic table, we have four blocks, S, P, D, and F blocks. These are the shapes of different types of orbitals. When we are talking about electronic configuration, for the sake of simplicity, we present the S, P, D, F orbital in the form of boxes. And electrons are presented as arrows. S orbitals can accommodate two electrons. P orbitals can accommodate six electrons. And D orbitals can accommodate ten electrons, while F, electro, F orbital can accommodate fourteen electrons. P orbitals, we have three sub orbital, three sub P orbital, P X, P Y, and P Z. Similarly, we have five sub orbitals in D. And we have seven suborbitals in F. The maximum capacity 
of electron in suborbital is 2. So 2 into 3 is equal to 6, 2 into 5 is equal to 10, and 2 into 7 is equal to 14. Now, look at the electronic configuration of carbon. Carbon atomic number is 6. So the electronic configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. 1s2, the shell is complete. 2s2, 2p, this is valence shell. S has a maximum 2 electron. P, 3 suborbital, 2 electrons are there. 1 suborbital is vacant. And this is how the valence electrons are presented 2s, 2px, 2py, 2pz. So the presentation of valence electron of carbon is 2s, 2, 2px, 1, 2py, 1, 2pz. There is no electron, so 2pz is empty. This is, these are the shapes of s, px, py, and pz orbitals. Now, bond formation, how a chemical bond is formed? So, atomic orbitals overlap or combine and form molecular orbitals. Atomic orbitals have two atoms. These two atoms may be similar or different. When they approach to each other, they combine and form molecular orbitals. Only valence and half fill orbitals take part in bond formation. Not all the atomic orbitals participate in bond formation. Only valence, that is the last shell. Only valence and the second condition is half fill. If the orbital is filled, it will not participate in bond formation. So only valence and half fill orbitals take part in bond formation. Half fill orbitals involved in bond formation are called bonding orbitals. And this was all about the chemical bonding. That what is a chemical bond? Why chemical bond is formed? How chemical bonds is how chemical bonds are formed? Now we are talking about organic molecules. What kind of bond are mostly present in organic molecule? So the most common bond in organic molecule is covalent bond. And as you know, that covalent bond is an example of intramolecular attractive forces. Covalent bond is formed by the mutual sharing of electron, while ionic bond is formed by transfer of electron. So covalent bond involves the sharing of electron between two atoms. Covalent bond involves the sharing of electrons between two atoms, a bond which is formed by mutual sharing of electrons by two atoms is called a covalent bond. The orbitals overlap and share the same region in space and give new molecular orbitals. So while sharing the electrons, the atomic orbital overlap and share the same region in space and thus give new set of molecular orbitals. Net molecular orbital are two types, bonding molecular orbital and anti-bonding molecular orbital. A covalent bond is formed if it fulfills the following conditions. Number first, the two combining orbitals must be half filled. Second is, effective overlap are the proper alignment of orbitals. Proper alignment orbitals mean effective overlap. The overlap between the two atoms will be effective and the third condition is electrons in bonding orbital have opposite spin. Now coming about the types of co covalent bond, covalent bonds are classified into two types. One is called sigma bond and the other one is called pi bond. There are two types of overlapping orbital, sigma and pi bond. Sigma bond is formed due to the head-to-head -head overlap or end-to-end -end overlap which we call axial overlap up to orbital it may be between 2s orbital or between s and p or between p and p 
on the other hand pi 1 is formed by the lateral o or sideways overlap of two p orbitals mostly the difference between sigma and pi bond is only one sigma bond exists between two atoms while there can be more than one pi bond between the atom the two between the two atoms next is the electron density is maximum n cylindrically symmetrical about the bond axis while in pi bond the electron density is high along the direction at right angle to the bond axis next difference is there is free rotation about the sigma bond while free rotation about the pi bond is not possible bond rotation is restricted in pi bond while free rotation is possible in sigma bond also this bond can be independently formed that is without the formation of a pi bond certain molecules do not contain pi bond but they must contain sigma bond However, the pi bond is formed after the sigma bond has been formed. So, when there is pi bond, it means that there must be sigma bond. But when there is sigma bond, there may or may not be a pi bond. So, the difference between these two is sigma bond can be independently formed, while a pi bond is formed after the formation of a sigma bond. And the last one is sigma bond is relatively strong, while pi bond is relatively weaker bond. Also, pi bond is more exposed. We can also classify covalent bonds on the basis of polarity. So, there are two types of covalent bond: non-polar covalent bond and polar covalent bond. A bond is said to be polar when one atom in the bond pair holds onto the electrons more tightly than the other atoms. When the electrons are mutually shared, and the electronegativity difference is zero. It means that the electrons will be equally attracted by the two bonded atoms. Such type of bond is called non-polar covalent bond. Look at the example of fluorine molecules. Both have same electronegativity. So the electron between the electron density between the two bonded atoms will be at the center. Now, on the other hand, in polar bond, when there is electronegativity difference, it means that the most electronegative elements, the most electronegative element will attract the bonded electron towards itself. And that's why a partial negative charge will be created on the most electronegative element while a partial positive charge will be created on the, uh, the relatively less electronegative atoms. Such type of bond is called polar bond. So that bond which is formed by identical atoms are mostly nonpolar while those bonds which are formed by different atoms. By difference we mean they have different electronegativity. When they have different electronegativity it means that the whole of more electronegative element will be more as compared to the other and thus partial negative charge and partial positive charge will be created. So we can say that there are two types of covalent bond. Polar covalent bond, non-polar covalent bond. Similarly the bond may be sigma, the bond may be pi bond. We can also classify the chemical covalent bond by single, double and triple. But single bond means sigma bond, double bond means one sigma, one pi bond and triple bond means one sigma bond, two pi bonds. It is up to you whether you classify as sigma and pi bond or whether you classify as single, double and triple bond. But when you classify the bond as single, double and triple, you have to explain the sigma and pi bonds also you have to differentiate between the sigma and pi bond after now we discussed what is chemical bond how chemical bonds are formed why chemical bonds are formed what are different types of chemical bonds we discussed two types number first sigma pi bond and polar non-polar bond now 
what are characteristics of a chemical bond what are the terms associated where we are this where we discuss the chemical bonding in a molecule the first thing which we may know is bond length bond length is defined as the equilibrium distance between the centers of the nuclei of the two bonded atoms the equilibrium distance between the centers of the nuclei of the two bonded atoms is called its bond length it is expressed in term of angstrom a picometer it is determined experimentally by x-ray diffraction or electron diffraction method or spectroscopic method there are various factors that affect bond length the first one is size of the atoms size of the bonded atoms next is the multiplicity of the bond and the third one is type of hybridization present so size of the atom the bond length increases with increase in the size of the atom for example if we look at the bond length of hydrogen iodide and compare it with hydrogen bromide the bond length of hydrogen iodide is more as compared to hbr why because the size of iodine is larger as compared to bromine if we compare the bond length of hie hbr scl and hf it is found that the bond length of it is more than hbr which in turn is more than scl because the size of iodine is larger than H than bromine similarly the size of bromine is larger than chlorine fluorine has fluorine size is smallest and that's the reason that the hf bond the bond length of hf is smaller as compared to hcl the second factor that affect the bond length is the multiplicity of bond multiplicity of bond we mean whether the bond is single double or triple so the bond length decreases with an increase in bond order by bond order we mean the number of bonds as the number of bonds are increases the bond length decreases because now the atoms are the atoms are joined tightly and now the bond distance decreases the third factor that affect the bond length is hybridization what what kind of hybridization exists in a molecule in next video we shall discuss hybridization that what is hybridization what are at different types as you know that s orbital is smaller in size therefore greater the s character shorter is the bond length so sp sp3 and sp2 when we compare the bond length of these two hybridizer these three hybridized orbitals we know that sp has 50% s character while sp2 has 33% s character when the s character is greater it means the bond will be shorter the two atoms will be close together so these are the three factors that affect the bond length number first size of the atom multiplicity of bond and types of hybridization next is bond order the number of bond present between two atoms is called the bond order greater the bond order greater is the stability of the bond during chemical bonding that is greater the greater is the bond enthalpy or bond energy greater energy will be required to separate the individual atoms and greater the bond order shorter is the bond length for example look at the carbon carbon single bond bond length which is 1.54 angstrom while carbon carbon double bond bond length is 1.34 angstrom and carbon carbon triple bonded bond length is 1.20 angstrom the next characteristic of a chemical bond which we may know is bond angle bond angle is defined as the it is the angle between two bonds or two bonded electrons pair in a in a compound the bond angle can help to differentiate between linear trigonal planar tetrahedral trigonal biplanar and octahedral molecules 
based upon the bond angle present we have different geometry for example certain molecules are linear because the bond angle between the atoms is 180 certain molecules are trigonal trigonal pair tetrahedral and some molecules are also tetrahedral so the geometry of the molecule is explained in terms of bond angle that what kind of bond angle is present in a molecule the ideal bond angles are the angle that demonstrate the maximum angle where it where it would minimize repulsion thus verifying the valence electron pair repulsion theory we know from the valence electron pair repulsion theory is the bond the bonded atoms are at maximum distance from each other from the central atom that's why 109 is considered as ideal bond angle and the molecule deviate from this ideal bond angle due to certain factors next is bond enthalpy or bond energy it is the amount of energy required to break one mole of bond so the amount of energy required to break one mole of bond so as to separate the molecule into individual gaseous atoms is called bond enthalpy or bond energy it is expressed usually in kilojoule per mole the energy required to break carbon hydrogen bond is 99 kilo kilojoule per mole sometimes kilojoule per mole sometimes kilojoule per bond enthalpy is usually expressed in kilojoule per mole or kilo kilojoule per mole bond association energy or bond enthalpy required to break carbon hydrogen bond is 99 kilo kilojoule per mole while that of carbon carbon single bond is 83 kilo kilojoule per mole carbon carbon double bond 146 kilo kilojoule per mole while for carbon carbon triple bond it is 200 kilo kilojoule per mole greater is the bond in dissociation enthalpy greater is the bond strength summary of the today video is we have to know what is mean by chemical bond why and how chemical bonds are formed then bonding in organic molecules especially we are talking about the covalent bonding and what are different types of covalent bond we have to know about the sigma bond and sigma bond formation how sigma bond is formed and how pi bond is formed what are the different characteristics of a sigma bond and what are different characteristics of a pi bond comparison of these two types sigma and pi bond comparison in terms of bond length comparison in terms of strength and comparison in terms of overlapping then characteristics of bonds the certain terms which are associated the chemical bonding topic for example bond length bond angle bond energy or bond enthalpy and bond order thank you